I want you to look carefully at the periodic table, memorize it and memorize it extremely, extremely well. All right. Uh, Doctor, I cannot hear your voice. Ah, now I'm going to talk. Okay. All right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yes. As I said, first thing, I want you to make a copy of the periodic table and make it available with you all the time, all the time, in every lecture. Why? Because we will always refer to it. And I want you to use my periodic table. Why? First, there are many reasons. The first reason is you are given the periodic table. This is the periodic table that we are using. And here in any uh, element, you know what's the atomic number, which is there, for example, here 28 for nickel. And you see the mass which we are going to use, the atomic mass. Okay, which is in this case 58.69. And also, you're given here all the uh, these constants that we're going to use in the, uh, the course. And I want you to know, to keep these constant, don't memorize the numbers, but know what are these constant. For example, the most important thing we're going to see here today is Planck's constant. It's given to you, even though I want you to, to memorize it, but it's given to you what's the Planck's constant. Okay? Keep this periodic table with you, even if we are in the discussion, because in, in, during the discussion, I want to, today we are going to use the periodic table a lot to measure the mass of the atom and so on and so forth. All right? I hope this is clear. Good. Okay, now we'll start chapter three. Chapter three, what's the title of this chapter three? It's called stoichiometry. Stoichiometry. What's the meaning of stoichiometry? Stoichiometry means calculation. All right, it means calculation. Uh, Dictator. Yes. Uh, could you record? Uh, it's recording, isn't it? Yes, yes it's, it's, it's recording. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Stoichiometry. Stoichiometry means calculation. So when we say stoichiometry in chemistry, we mean things related to calculation and the, relation, the ratio of combination of compounds. Good. All right. And to start with, we're going to determine, as I said at the beginning, you should know by now very, very well, what's the mass of one proton? Uh, 
mu you have to keep this in mind what's the mass of one neutron one a m u what's the mass of electron negligible it's not zero but negligible negligible all right negligible good and that's why if i have hydrogen one and one what's the mass of this hydrogen How many, how many protons? One. 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 How many protons? One. One. How many neutrons? Zero. Zero. And the mass is one AMU. Exactly. How about this hydrogen? Two AMU. There is one proton, one, one proton plus one neutron. And that's why it is 2 mu. How about this hydrogen? One and three. There is one proton plus two neutrons. So we know that this is the mass of one proton. This is the mass of one neutron. The total is uh, the mass for this one is 3 a mu. Very good. But look at the periodic table. We'll go back to the periodic table. What's the map? See, and here, what's this? Uh, atomic number. This is the ato atomic. Atomic number. Okay, what's this number? Mass number. No, it's not mass number. Atomic mass. Yes, atomic mass, which is the average of the atomic numbers. So again, I repeat one more time. Here, when we say 1 mu, 2 mu, 3 mu, these are the mass number. But if you look at the periodic table, you will find that hydrogen mass is 1.008 amu, okay, one hydrogen atom. The mass is 1.008 amu, which is the average of the atomic mass of the isotopes. These are isotopes, and this is called now atomic mass is this clear atomic mass i want you to memorize all of these and keep it in mind we took this last uh, chapter this is sorry this is atomic number what's the atomic number proton number of protons what's the atomic mass or atomic number mass number sorry mass number Mass of the protons are with the neutrons. Number of protons plus neutrons. Neutrons. Good. What's the atomic mass? The, yes. av the average mass of isotopes. You have to keep this also in mind. Clear? Very good. Now, if I want as this is now, this is the mass of hydrogen atom. How about if I have H2O? Then what's the mass of H2O? H2O consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So what's the mass of atomic mass now, not atomic mass, but we call it formula mass, formula mass, which is the mass of not now atom, but a compound, a whole compound. You should go to the periodic table. What's the mass of hydrogen? Hydrogen is 
1.008 AMU, which is the average atomic mass. What's the mass of oxygen? It is, look here, what is it? 16.0 AMU. So what will be the mass of water? It will be two hydrogen, so it is two times 1.008 plus uh, plus 1 times 16.000 uh, the total mass of H2O formula mass of H2O will be uh, 16 um, 18.016 can you do it? All right. Okay, very good. Let's do very quickly do this compound H or NH3. NH3. Again, how can I find the formula for mass for NH3? Very quickly. I should go back to here and I'll find that nitrogen is nitrogen is 14.01 and the hydrogen I have it already here so very quickly do it, do it in, your in your calculator what's the mass of NH3 NH3 uh, 17.034 17.034 AMU exactly I want to stress also that the unit that we're using here is AMU, AMU, very important. Why? Because I'm saying what's the mass, formula mass for the molecule? It's for That's one it. molecule, one molecule only, one more water molecule, one molecule of water or NH3 or whatever. Okay, good. Keep this in mind. Very good. Very quickly, tell me, tell me what's the mass of this compound, C3H8. You need the periodic table. See, I'm not going to bring the periodic table now, but let me help you now. Carbon is 12.01. Hydrogen is 1.008 oxygen is 16.00 uh, what else nitrogen is 14.01 keep this in mind but for example lithium i don't know what's lithium i have to go to uh, lithium is uh, 6.00 Nine four. Okay, go ahead. Solve A very quickly. Forty four point zero nine four. Forty four point zero nine four. Zero nine four. What's the unit? A A M U. A M U. A M U. Don't forget formula mass for one molecule. And the unit is AMU, AMU. Okay, how about lithium hydroxide? Very quickly. Twenty-three, uh, thirty-two point uh, nine four nine. Thirty-two point nine four nine AMU. Twenty-three, I mean, I'm sorry. Twenty-three. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yes, it must be 23. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, how about barium C2H3O2O? Uh, uh, no, no. Okay, we need to find the mass of barium because I have everything here except barium. So I will go and find what's the mass of barium. Barium is here, which is 
without rounding. Without rounding, okay. Three two eight, I believe you. Three two eight. Keep this in your numbers now. Very good. One three seven three two eight. So what's the mass of this one? Two hundred fifty five. Okay, very quickly calculate it. Two hundred fifty-five point uh, forty-seven. Two hundred fifty-five point one four one four one eight. Two hundred fifty-five point four. Amy. Very good. Uh, doctor. Yes. Uh, number two after the brackets. What uh, does that mean? After the, this one. Uh, last one, yes. After uh, O2. After O2 is two. Uh, yes, two, two. Two, uh, two, uh, two all the brackets. Yes, of course. How can we calculate it? We have one barium. How many carbon? Four. Two car Four carbon. Four. How many hydrogen? Six. Six hydrogen. Six hydrogen. How many oxygen? Four. Four oxygen. You add the mass of these and you should get 255.4. Is this clear? Very good. Yes. Now, let me ask you a very simple question. Let's talk about C3H8. I want to know what's the total mass of C3H8? 44.09. All right, AMU. Keep this in mind. I want you to tell me what's the percentage of mass, mass of carbon. What's the percentage of carbon only? Not the whole thing, but what's the percentage of carbon? Go ahead, tell me what's the percentage of carbon. 36 over 44. Yes, that's how you, you make 36.03 divided by 44.09 times 100. 100, and this will give you the percentage of carbon. Okay, what's the percentage of hydrogen? Eight open open eight point zero six four eight point zero six divided by forty four point zero nine times one hundred. And I need an answer. What's the answer here? Eight point to 81.71. 81.71. Or 72. 71 or 72? 72. Uh, because after, the, after one year, it's not. 81.72. Good. What's the percentage of hydrogen? 18. 18.28. Excellent. 18.28. Percent, percent. Good. What's the total of these two? Hundred. It must be hundred. Is this clear? All right. Very good. I hope this is clear. And you should do it for everything here. If I ask you to find what's the 
percentage of lithium hydroxide or barium or carbon or anything, you should take the mass of any element divided by the total element. That's all. Good. All right, we did this already. Let's do it for lithium hydroxide. What's the mass of, what's the atomic mass? Uh, atomic mass of, of lithium hydroxide. How are you going to do it? You should go and find what's the mass of lithium, which we did. In here, what's the mass? 6.941. So, 6.941, and we know that oxygen is 16.01.00, and hydrogen or carbon, carbon is 12.01. All right, good. Find the mass of lithium hydroxide. You will find that it should be 73.87. I want you now to find what's the percentage of lithium, what's the percentage by mass of carbon, what's the percentage of oxygen of each one of them. Go ahead and give me numbers, which is here. It's the mass of lithium times one of coal, oh, times what? Two divided by 73.8. 8.9 times 100. Go ahead, give me number. For lithium, 18.79. Very good. Okay, do it for carbon. 16.25. 16.25. And do it for oxygen. 64.96. And now add them all together. 100. 100 must be. Good. I hope so, and you're absolutely right. Now, when we have a chemical equation, this is very important, chemical equation, we have to balance it. How to write and balance chemical equation. When we have a chemical reaction, always in chemical reaction, we can write chemical equation. For any chemical reaction, we write chemical equation in which we have reactants. Reactants in this side goes to what? Products. Products. Now, by the law, law of conservation of mass. What's the law of conservation of mass? The mass of uh, reactants equal the mass of uh, products. Must equal the mass of the product. All right. This means this means any atom that's available here, it must be the same amount available here. That's why we need to balance chemical equation. We need to. This is a chemical equation. When we write it, we must. What is in this side? Uh, reacting. Don't forget this side. These are reactants. Yeah. And this side and this side are called products. Okay, good. Now, it's not enough to write the chemical equation like this. First, you have to write whatever the reactants and the product. You have to put what is the uh, physical state of the uh, chemical reaction. What do we say here? We say that SO3 combine with H2O to give you H2SO4. This is the reactants again. 
and this is a product. And we say that this react with SO3 react with H2O to give you the product as H2SO4. But this is not enough. We have also to put the physical state. And I want you to memorize this very well. What G stands for? Gas. Yeah. Gas. And L? Liquid. Liquid. And S? Solid. And a Q? Aqueous. Aqueous. What do you mean by aqueous? Mahlul. In water. In water. In H2O. Is this clear? Very good. So what's the reaction here? I want you to read the reaction. You should say that NH3 what? Gas react with hot with what's the name of this compound? We know took it in chapter two. Hydrogen chloride gas. Hydrogen chloride gas to give you. You should know the name of this compound also. We took it in chapter two. There's a special group. What's the name of the special group? Ammonium. Ammonium chloride solid. Ammonium chloride solid. You should know how to say this reaction. And here we say that calcium carbonate solid react to give you or by itself decompose. We say a decompose. Decompose to give you calcium oxide and car calcium oxide solid plus carbon dioxide gas. Okay. Here, sulfur solid react with oxygen gas to give you sulfur dioxide gas. SO3 or uh, uh, sulfur trioxide gas react with water liquid to give you H2SO4, which is uh, sulfuric acid from aqueous solution. You should know how to name this compound. We are still not done also. We should make sure that the number of atoms in reactant is equal to the number of atoms on product. In this last reaction, how many sulfur atoms we have? The total sulfur atoms we have in, in reactant. One sulfur. One. How many oxygen? Uh, four. Four oxygen. How many hydrogen? Two. Two hydrogen. And the product, how many sulfur? One sulfur. The product. How many oxygen? Four. Four. And how many hydrogen? Two. Two. Is it balanced? Yes. Balanced. We should make sure that the chemical reaction is balanced. Okay. If we have allotropes, what's the allotropes means? Allotrope, what does it mean? Same level. Two. Two. Different. Structure. For. Uh, compound. Consisting of one element. Like here, what's this compound consisting of? Graphite is consisting of one atom, which is carbon. What's diamond? Consisting of one atom, which is carbon. So. But they are two different compounds. This is the pencil that we use. And this is the jewelry. Clear? And both of them react with oxygen 
to give you CO2 gas. CO2 gas. Allotropes, you have to know what's allotrope. Two different structures, graphite and diamond, for a compound consisting of only one element. Or two different compounds in a structure. I should take this. I'll take, sorry, I will take. So they are not isotopes, doctor? No, they're not isotopes. They are two different compounds. Two different compounds. One of them is graphite, and the other one is diamond, consisting of one element. Both of them is consisting of only one element, like graphite and diamond. Give me an example of another allotropes. Oxygen and ozone. O2 and O3, two different compounds. This one is different from this one, and both of them consisting only of oxygen. Good. Good. OK, I want you to, in your notes now, write this reaction, which is H2 gas plus O2 gas to give you water liquid. OK, very quickly balance it at the top here. How many hydrogen we have here? How many two. hydrogen? Two hydrogen and two oxygen to give you two hydrogen and one oxygen. Is this balanced? No. No. How can I balance it? I must multiply this by two. To make this way, I have two hydrogen and four hydrogen. Multiply, multiply uh, hydrogen with two. Two to make this four hydrogen. So I have four hydrogen, two oxygen, and four hydrogen, two oxygen. It is balanced now. That's uh, doctor. Yes. Uh, the first one. How can uh, we get H two O and we have uh, we have two uh, H and two O and we uh, have mm, the. Uh, the vinyl just one uh, oxygen. Where is it gone, the second oxygen? That's why you need to balance it. The other oxygen is here now. Yes. That's when it's balanced. So we have four, four hydrogen, one, two, three hydrogen, and we have two oxygen, one, two, and in the product we have one, two oxygen, one, two, three, four hydrogen. Clear? Yes. OK, good. When we have a whole group like CO3, 2 minus, we can treat it as a group, multi, uh, uh, multi atom uh, or multi uh, uh, atomic uh, ion. In balancing, we can use CO3 as a whole group and keep it always followed up as a whole group. OK, very good. Let's do this problem. Let's balance this equation. C4 H10 plus O2 to give you CO2 plus H2. How should you do it? Concentrate with me. Do it for each atom by itself first. So how many? Carbon do we have in this side? Four. Four. How many do we have in this side? One. One. Well, the first thing I will do, I will multiply this by four. Okay? This means I already balance the carbon. Clear? Yeah. Now, when I have four carbon, then I'll go to the other atom, which is hydrogen. How many hydrogen I have here? Ten. And how many hydrogen do I have here? Two. two. Only two. There is no other hydrogen. What should I do here? Multiply with five. Five by five. Now the hydrogen is balanced. Good. What am I left with? Oxygen. Uh, oxygen. How many do I have here? In oxygen. 
to how many oxygen on that side? On this side. How many oxygen do I have? Eight. 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 And how many I have here? Oh, what? Five. 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 What's the total? Thirteen. Thirteen in the product. In product, right? Right? How many I have yes. in the at this time? Two. Only two. How can I balance it? Multiply by seven. Multiply by 13 over two. All right. When you multiply 13 over two, times two, what's this equal to? 13. Which is already balanced. Good. But we don't like to keep fraction in the chemical equation. So what's the next step? I will multiply the whole, the, whole equation. the whole equation by two. So what will be the total equation at the end? It will be here what? Multiply everything by two. Uh, two C. Two C four. It's ten. And then. 13. And then what's this? Eight. Eight. And this one? Uh, ten. Ten. Yes. Now let's go and check everything one more time. How many carbons do have do we have on this side? Eight. Eight. How many carbons do you have on this side? Eight. Eight. How many hydrogen? I have two times ten. Uh, 20. 20. How many is this side? 20. 20. Okay. How many oxygen do I have here? 26. 26 on this side. Let's see. 8 times 2 is what? 16. 16. 16. And then times, times 10 times 1? 10. What's the total? 26 oxygen. So it is balanced. Do you know how to balance things? Now, as I said, this is a trick that you need to do sometimes to balance just to make sure that everything is okay. Is this clear? Yes. Uh, many different uh, to balance or uh, the, uh, the numbers of uh, coefficient. Uh, What's again? Let's go, for example, I think I will answer your question in a while. OK, let's very quickly. See. Let's read the question. I'm not going to give you this as an exam. I will tell you, write a balanced equation. For aqueous reaction of barium hydroxide, I will give you the name like this, and you should know that barium hydroxide is actually this compound. And then I say aqueous. What do you mean by aqueous? In water or the state. And perchloric acid. You know what's perchloric acid? This is perchloric acid. We took it from before and uh, chapter two. And again, aqueous, uh, aqueous barium hydroxide and perchloric acid to produce barium perchlorate. That's barium perchlorate and water. So in the exam, I will give you the question without the equation, and they want you to write this equation. Is this clear? Good. Now, look at this carefully and balance it very quickly. Go ahead. Do it one by one. First, start with barium. Barium is uh, okay. Barium, barium is balanced. Okay. One and one, so it's balanced. Good. Then go to chlorine. How many chlorines do you have? How many in the reactant? One. One. How many in the product? Two. Two. Okay, two. 
reaction. Yes. I have to multiply by two. Multiply by two. Multiply this by two. Now the chlorine is multiplied by two and it is two. And in this side, we did not multiply by anything. So the chlorine is balanced. Very good. Next, go to hydrogen. How many do we have here? We have two four. plus two, four. And how many we have here? Two. This, there's no two. hydrogen. There's only here. So what is it? Multiplied by two. Two. Multiplied by two. Very good. Last thing. So on this side, so hydrogen, I have two in here. Uh, sorry, four in here and. Uh, yeah, two and two, four. Two plus two, which is four. Very good. Two plus two hydrogen is four. Last thing is oxygen. What's oxygen? Ten. I have here two times. I have here two oxygen, two oxygen. And then this side, I have eight oxygen. Total is ten. 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 And then the reactant, I have ten. How many products? Ten. Four times two is eight, and two yes. is ten. So it is already balanced. Do you know how to balance it? Good. Yes. Teacher. The doctor. Yes, go ahead. Uh, usually, should we start to nurture an element? You keep the oxygen lasting. And hydrogen is the, was the one before the last. So do everything other than hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is the one before the last, and the last, last thing is oxygen. Okay, go ahead, balance this equation. I'm not going to talk. I want you to do it yourself. As I said, what's the best thing to do? Start with carbon and find how many reactant and how many should have in product, and then after carbon, hydrogen, and after hydrogen, oxygen, only. Carbon, we have four. Four here. And uh, the side, two, one. We should multiply by four. Exactly. Four, now the carbon in product is also four. Very good. How about hydrogen? Hydrogen, we have eight, so we should multiply it by four. Eight here. We have only two here. I will multiply this by four. This means eight hydrogen. Very good. Next. Oxygen, we have four. On the other side, we have five. Uh, we have uh, nine. And two. Two and two, four. Another set. We have here eight and four, twelve. So multiply by five. That's by anything. Don't multiply by five. Multiply by five. Only multiply this by five because it's the only thing that has oxygen. This thing, if you multiply it with anything, you will change the carbon and hydrogen. So multiply this by five. In this case, we have. 12 oxygen in here, and we have 2 plus 5 times 2 is 12. So everything is balanced. You know how to balance things now? Very good. So let's say, how can we read this? How we read this? We say that one molecule, one molecule of C4H8O2 React with what? Go ahead. Five, five molecules of oxygens to make what? Uh, four, molecules. Four, four. four molecules of CO2 and four, four molecules of what? Is this clear? I repeat one more time. Whenever you have a chemical reaction, you should say that one molecule of C4H8O2 
react with five molecules of O2 to give you four molecules of CO2 plus four uh, molecules of H2O or H2O water. Is this clear? Okay. Now, I will define something extremely, extremely important. What? The mold. All right? And the mole is very easy number. The mole, the first definition of the mole is it is Avogadro's number. And this is Avogadro's number. You should memorize it, even though I'm going to give it to you on the periodic table. See this number? What's the name of this number? Of this number? It's called Avogadro's Avogadro. number. Avogadro. We will refer to it as NA. Whenever I write N A, you should what's this letter means? Avogadro's number. Good. And what is this? Uh, Avogadro's number? It is 6.022. You don't have to memorize the rest. 6.022 times 10 to the power 23. I want you, whenever I ask you what's Avogadro's number, you should say right away. It's 0 0.22 times 10 to the power 23 uh, without unit. It's just a number. All right. And this is available for you. You see this number? Oh, not plan. What's this number? Can you see it? Yes, yes. It is Avogadro's number. So in the exam, I will give you Avogadro's number, but even if I give it to you, I want you to memorize it. But it's available for you in here. And if you read very clearly, it's not very clear, I know. 0 .6 0.6.022 times 10 to the power 23, available for you here. Memorize it and keep it in your mind. And keep it in your mind that this is called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. Very good. What do I mean by this? If I ask you, if I go ask you, what is one dozen? What are you going to say? Dozen is a twelve. Dozen means what? Twelve. Right? 12. What's the unit? Just a number. Just a number. A dozen, dozen means 12. A dozen means 12. Whenever I, so if I have uh, five dozen of eggs, dozen eggs. So how many I have total eggs? 60. 60. 60 eggs. So from where did I get the unit? Because it doesn't of eggs. Because I said eggs here. But if I say I have three dozen oranges. Okay, then how many I have here? 36 orange. 36 orange. Okay, very good. If I have 100 dozen of uh, sodium, then how many atoms of sodium do I have? 1,200. What? 1,000. Oh, 1,200. What? And sodium. 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 Whatever I say. Is this clear? Is this clear? So, clear. doesn't have no unit. But if I put anything with unit, 
then it will take the same unit. Okay, whatever I said about dozen, I will say about a mole. Whenever I say one mole, you should understand that this is a number. What's this number? It's 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. And what's the unit? What's the unit here? Anything. No unit. No unit. If I say one mole, you should say it's 6.022 times 10 to the power 23 without unit. Is this clear? Okay. If yeah. I say one mole H2, then what is this equal to? Same. What? 6.022 times 10 to the power 23. And then I should say what? H2O. H2, not O. H2 only. Is this clear? If I say, for example, I have uh, three mole in A, then how many is how many in A is there? Three times three the quadro number. Three times point oh two two times ten to the power twenty three in A. Is this clear? I want to stress one more time. If I say one mole and stop. What's this equal to? I forgot this number. What's a unit? No, no unit. No unit. No unit. If I say one mole H2, then I say it's a forgotten number with unit. Now, whatever unit I use, I put in the unit here. So I should say here one mole of H2 molecule. Here H2 molecule. One mole of Sodium atoms, I should say sodium atoms, and so on and so forth. So, if I have three or uh, uh, let's say five or 0 0.5, 0 0.5 mole H2O, then this is equal to what? Zero point five times what? 6.422 times 10 to the power 23 what? H2O. All molecules. Because this is H2O molecules. Is this clear? I hope this is clear. Very good. So, as I told you in chapter one, we always, whenever you say, one mole of any object is equal to what? Avogadro's number of what? The object. The object. The same object. We say it here. So we can do it like this. We can do it like this to get rid of uh, number. So if I have, if I have this object here, I will say one mole hydrogen H2 molecules. This is, this is equal to what? 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 H2 molecules. Clear? Very good. Now, if I have, if I have a point to uh, mole, mole uh, H2 molecule. Then how many molecules is this? How many molecules? I should multiply it by what? What should I put at the top and the bottom? I should write here one mole of H2 molecule 
and then the top show what should I write? Forgot the number. 6.2 times 10 to the power 23, what? Multiply with 0 0.2 H2 molecule. And this way, you get rid of this unit with this unit, and you have the answer. Is this clear? So I want you to know how to, because this is equal to this, always keep in mind that I can get rid of any unit by dividing or multiply it by the other unit, like this. Keep, make a fraction like this, and unit conversion here, make what's called unit conversion. Is this clear? Yes. Very good. A typical body, our body, contains 30 moles of calcium. So in your body, there are 30 moles of calcium. So what's the, the information that we have? We have 30 mole calcium. Okay. Determine how many calcium atoms. I know that one mole calcium atom, one mole calcium atom equal to how many? Of calcium number. It's calcium number times 10 to the power 23 what? Calcium. Calcium what? What? Atom. Calcium atom. Our body consists of 30 calcium atom. 30 mole of calcium atom. How many molecules is this? Which fraction should I use? First or second fraction? Second. Second fraction. Get rid of it by saying one mole calcium atoms. And here, 6.022 times 10 to the power 23 calcium atoms. And you have the answer. Is this clear? Yes. Is it easy? Yes. But this is the solution. Next, B. The number of moles of calcium in a sample containing determine if we have 1.00 times 10 to the power 20. So we have 1.00 times 10 to the power 20, 20 calcium atoms. How many moles is this? Which fraction? Divide the uh, second one. Try, try the Gadro number. Which fraction should I use? So so second second uh, one. The first. The first one. I have calcium atom here. I want to get rid of calcium atom from here. So I should say 6.022 times 10 to the power 23 calcium atom. And I get rid of this unit with this unit. And at the top I have here one mole calcium atom. And they have the answer in calcium atom. The final answer will be uh, calcium atom. You should get rid of units. That's why in the second one, you use this fraction, fraction two, one. In the first one in here, we use fraction two. Is this clear? I hope this is clear, and this is the answer for this one. Good. Next, the other definition for the mole, still we have the mole, we define the mole. The first, so we have, two definitions for the mole. The mole, and usually when we write it in, uh, in, in chemistry, we just say M-O-L without the E. So when you say one mole of calcium, for example, one mole calcium, what's this equal to? 6.022 times 10 to the power 
23 what? Calcium. 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 You should say the same unit. Calcium atom. Okay? Calcium atom. Same unit. As I said, when we refer to mole, if we write it M-O-L, that's a mole. Clear? Okay. This is the first definition. So, what's the definition of a mole? A mole is what? A mole. Okay. 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 A mole is a forgotten number without unit. Clear? That's the first definition. First definition. We have another definition for the mole. The mole is mass of atom or molecule in gram. The unit is, what is it? Gram. Gram. So if I say one mole of, one mole of hydrogen, H2, then this is equal to, uh, the mass of one hydrogen atom is 1.008. Get it from the periodic table. We got this from the periodic table. Clear? Times two. Why did they multiply by two? Because there is. We have two. Two hydrogen. H2. Which is equal to what now? 2.016. And then what's the unit now? Grams. Gram H2. Clear? Okay. I want you now to do, keep this in mind. As I said, you will need the periodic table all the time. Hydrogen is 1.008. Oxygen is 16.0. Carbon? 12.01. 12 Don't memorize these numbers, but it's available in the periodic table. But to solve problems now, we will do it. Now, so if I have, if I have one mole of H2O, then how many grams is this? Three. One mole H2O. Eighteen. I need the full number. Use your calculator. To calculate one mole of H two O, eighteen point zero one six. Eighteen point zero one six gram. What? H two O. You have to say the whole thing. Gram H two O. Good. Let's have one mole. C three H eight. Go ahead. Forty-four point something. Forty-four point zero nine four. Forty-four point zero nine four grams. Nine four. And then yes, you have units. Grams. Gram. What? C three H eight. You have to put the whole unit. Gram. But here it is equal to gram. So the ball have two definition. The atomic mass in gram or Avogadro's number. Clear? Now, from this, we can change from one thing to the other very easily. If I have, if I have 10, 10 grams of carbon, 10 grams of carbon, how many moles is this? Keep in mind, that one mole carbon equal to what? 
كادرو نمبر نو اي وونت ان جرام نو 12.01 جرام 12.01 From where you got the 12.01 ريدك تيبل ريدك تيبل جود 1 مول اوف كاربن يقول 12.01 جرام وات كاربن اول رايت اف اي هاف اونلي 10 جرام كاربن هاو ماني مول اوف ذس 10.00 جرام كاربن ديفايدد باي 12.01 نوت ديفايد اي وونت تو مولتيبلاي باي فراكشن واتس ذا فراكشن 1 carbon at the top, at the top, and then the bottom. 12.01 what? Gram carbon. Then the gram carbon will go with the gram carbon and they have the answer. Is this clear? On the other hand, If I have 0 0.9 mole carbon, how many grams is this? Uh, times uh, 12, 0, 1. I should get rid of the mole carbon. I want to get rid of mole carbon, so I will put mole carbon here. Get rid of this unit. Put this unit. And I know one more carbon equal to what? 12.0. What? Gram carbon. And you have the answer. Is this clear? Very good. Let's go even further. Determine the number of water molecules and The hydrogen molecule atoms and oxygen atom in 3.26 gram water. If we have 3.26 gram H2O, then how many, how many, uh, how many moles H2O is this? What should I do? Uh. The rate is 18.1 uh, H2O is equal to what? 18.0 16. 16. All right, of the whole thing, and then uh, calculate how many uh, moles is. How many moles? Quickly. 0.18 moles. H2O. Is this clear? You agree? Yes. Okay. How many molecules H2O now? How many molecules? Can you change 0.18 mole H2O into number of molecules? Yes. Avogadro. It is mole H2O, so I will put here one mole H2O, and what should I put at the top? Avogadro. Avogadro. 6.022 times 10 to the power 23, and then what? Molecule, you have to write this, molecule H2O, and you have the answer. Is this clear? See, you will change, we change gram into molecules. Give me the answer. Uh, 1.08 1.08 
Let's do it like 10 to the power of 23. Over 23, what? Give you units. Uh, mo mole. Molecule, no, molecule is too old. You have to be careful of the unit. Molecule is too old. So we are talking about each molecule. Is this clear? Now let me ask you a very simple question. If I have 1.08 times simply power 23 molecule H2O, how many H atom in this compound? And how many oxygen atom? First, let's start with oxygen. If I have 1.08 times simply power 23 molecule H2O, how many oxygen atom? 1.08 multiplied by 10 to the power 23. 1.08 times 10 to the power 23 oxygen atom. Why? Because each H2O, it has one oxygen and two hydrogen. So if I have this number of molecules, I have the same number of oxygen. How many hydrogen atom? Multiplied by 2. 2 times 1.08 times 10 to the power 23. Very good. Okay, last question. B, if we have 7.92 times 10 to the power 19 molecule CO2 molecules, how many? What's the mass? I want to change it to mass. What should I do? Uh, change um, it to mole first, then change it to mole. mole. How can I change it to mole? Uh, let's do it like one mole. Avogadro. One mole CO2 equal to what? 6.022 times 10 to the power 23 CO2 mole. Two molecules. Get rid of this unit with this unit and get the answer. What's the answer? One point thirty one point three minus to the power minus eight. Then one point three times ten to the power minus eight more, right? Right? To the minus four. I think minus four, four, not minus eight. Minus four. Well, yeah, it looks minus four is much better. Yes, of course. I agree. Minus four. But it's 1.3, right? Yes. 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 And then don't forget, molecule I think what? Minus 14. More CO2. More CO2. Now, if I have 1.3 times 10 to the power 4 mole CO2, how can I change it to gram? I know that one mole CO2. Give me what? Multiply it by uh, uh, the mass from the periodic uh, table. Mass. Go ahead. Carbon is 12.01 and oxygen is 16. Don't forget this. Carbon 12.01 and oxygen is 16.00. Uh, so what should I write here? From what? Don't forget to write the whole name. Gram CO. Gram CO. Okay, and give me the answer. Give me the final answer. Doctor, I think 1.3 must be right in by, uh, uh, minus 14. Uh, 3.7 3. Multi multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2. 3.7 times 10 to the power minus 3. Gram uh, Is this clear? Yes, clear. Yes. Uh, yes. yes, these are the answers. And the answer is 5.79 times 10 to the power minus 3. Well, please, it's fine. Not
It's five, yes, not three. Yeah, it is five. This is the correct answer. Can you see here? This is the answer. You should do it this way. That's how I did it. If you notice, that's how I did it. It's two steps. Instead of doing it two steps, I did it one step here. And this is, we did it for the first one for water, also in two steps or in one time. I want you to know how to do these things very well. All right. And we'll stop here for the lecture. And uh, I will delay the homework till tomorrow instead of today. All right.